Welcome to Will It Work, I am Kevin. Today we're looking at the Super Console X Pro from Kinhan K, or Kin Hank. Probably Kin Han K. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, just a little emulation console, but everybody really likes this one, and it seems to be the most popular one right now, 2021, uh, in terms of um, affordability, good menu, good gameplay, uh, good system all around. Now, as is usual with these things, right now it's kind of a weird time because um, you can find these things on like Amazon, eBay, etc. fully loaded with uh, all sorts of pirated ROMs. And um, I don't know, like, I don't think it's going to last. Like, I think at some point here somebody is going to um, put the hammer down on uh, not so much the units. There's nothing wrong with selling a, a, a console that can emulate games. It's that they're packing in all the games, right? And, and the games themselves, for the most part, are, you know, copyrighted and trademarked and all of these other things. And, you know, there are legitimate companies like uh, um, Hype, Hypercade, I think that's their name. Uh, that are licensing out uh, the games for the system, uh, or you have something like um, uh, the Poly Mega, which uh, allows you to actually put in the original games into the system, same with like a Hyperkin, uh, and be able to, um, you know, play those original titles on a different piece of hardware, because the hardware itself is emulatable, but... Uh, the um, the games, you know, some of it's abandoned wear, and I understand abandoned wear, and I think abandoned wear is a good thing. I think that um, you know companies get sold, the titles they can't really be re-released because um, the music in them would need new licensing, and uh, the people involved might need to get some paid some sort of residuals, and and, and all these sorts of weird things, and so. The, the, you know, maybe there's like a sponsorship or a logo um, in there, something of those nature, something of that nature. And uh, the parent company is not going to ever re release it due to the complexities of the st legal structure. Uh, and, you know, or they've just sort of abandoned the trademarks, etc. And those titles kind of flow out, and that's okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm all for that. And, uh, um, I think if a company also just doesn't want to bother with their old library of game titles and doesn't mind letting people go out and play those games, I'm, I think that's great too. I just think that there's also, like, you know, uh, some companies that, um, you know, are, are still licensing and selling their, their titles. And, uh, you know, people that are giving them away for free, you know, uh, piracy is always going to be a thing. And, uh, you know, but it doesn't mean it should be super easy. I guess that's, that's how I think of it. Like, uh, if everybody pirates everything and it becomes super easy, then uh, nobody's going to make any money. So, you know, it, it probably should still be somewhere in, like, the fringe areas of the Internet or something and, and not so blatant that they just sell, um, you know, one terabyte worth of games in a memory stick on Amazon. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, uh, that's just crazy to me. Anyway, enough of my ranting about the, the days of piracy. Uh, I obviously bought one. It obviously is full of games. What are you going to do? That's just how they come. So, Super Console X Pro. I'll show you the box here. <clears throat> Zoom out a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> so it runs PSP, PS1, N64, Dreamcast, Neo Geo, Sega, MAME, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy... Um, Mega Drive, Super Famicom, Famicom, and more. Runs 80 plus emulators, is what they say. And it's powerful performance. Apparently, you know, the, the, the Pro is better than uh, the, um, the regular one. But who knows if that's just a buzz thing because they include some extra junk and it's actually the same hardware. I don't know. Uh, in terms of what the pack in came with, uh, I got the HDMI cable. That's the 
bag that the unit came in. There's a uh, USB hub, a remote, in case you want to, I don't know, watch movies or something. Power adapter in there. And then we got a couple of joysticks, game sticks, that look oddly like a PlayStation 2 controller. Hmm. Except the buttons uh, have uh, the uh, Zabby uh, letters instead of the PlayStation numbers. And it has a little USB dongle. And it takes two AAA batteries. So, this is the less, less interesting part. more interesting part is how it looks, whether it works, and how well it works with the uh, various game uh, consoles that are it's emulating. So why don't we uh, flip over to the video side, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, here we are with the Super Console X Pro. I just booted it up. You might hear a little double audio getting a little out of my monitor at the same time. It's interesting that it has, a, has an intro like that. It's kind of polished, right? You don't normally see intros on these kinds of things. Um, so, uh, Kin Hank. <laughs> uh, yeah. Loading all of the games into the menu is what I'm guessing is going on there. And let's see what we got. So we got 1,232 games. That's crazy. We got the Super Nintendo. Super Graphics. Hey, I'm familiar with that system. I'm familiar with all these systems. The Vectrex. Wow. It's kind of cool that they're emulating the Vectrex. I knew that was something that you could do, but... I don't know. It's just weird that to see it, like, in its own standalone thing and not, like, some... Uh, I have to put it together with MAME by myself or whatever. It's kind of cool. Virtual Boy. Ah, it's just... That's just dumb. Wonder Swan. Wonder Swan Color. The Sharp X6800. So that's probably actually a PC of some sort. Um, running on a 6800 processor is my guess. I'm not familiar with that, but it, I'm certain it's some sort of uh, uh, Mac or something. Uh, clone. Let's, uh, let's pause for a moment and see what that is actually, because I am not familiar with it off the top of my head anyway. Yeah, it's a home computer created by Sharp, first released in 1987 and sold only in Japan. The first model features a 10 megahertz Motorola 6800 CPU, so it's slightly faster than uh, the Amiga. One megabit of RAM and no hard drive. That's not good. The last model was released in 1993 with a 25 megahertz Motorola 6803, 68030, 4 megabyte of RAM, and optional 80 megabyte SCSI hard drive. All that's good except for the SCSI part. SCSI is such a pain in my ass. Um, so basically, some sort of PC. I'm curious of what the operating system that it ran on is. Um, something of their own? The X68K runs an operating system called. Human 68K, which was developed for Sharp by Hudson Soft, an MS-DOS workalike. Human 68K features English-based commands very similar to those in MS-DOS. Eh, some sort of a DOS thing. So it's probably like a lot of other computers, kind of like an Amiga computer, except it was like DOS, maybe more like a PC, but running on a 6800 for easy portability. And you could uh, um, play a bunch of games on it. Pretty cool. Not familiar with it. Because uh, I don't really collect computers, collect game systems, but it looks like it was like, you know, Amiga, Commodore 64, etc. It was essentially a game system that probably also had some decent files. 
Let's take a look at the some of the titles on this thing here, if we can. Uh, a is select. I'm selecting. It's not doing anything. How about B? I think B is select. So could be a uh, problem here. Afterburner 2. I mean, Hudson Soft, you know, they had, you know, and this was, uh, they had good games, and, and this was, like, released, you know, in Japan, and obviously was around for a while, so I would imagine they've got some pretty good licenses in here for things. Hey, they could play Balloon Fight. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, let's back up. We got the Sinclair. Everybody knows the Spectrum. 5,252 games. Psh, that's dumb. Most of those games are going to be crap. All games. Uh, we have 41,490 games on this memory card. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's just crazy to me. I could not play all those games in a lifetime. Uh, I guess I can tag my favorites. Let's see what they already have selected here. Kid, no miracle world. And soldier. Altered beast on the master system. It's a weird choice. Crash Bandicoot, Donkey Kong N64. Yeah, so these are weird choices. Flashback, the quest for identity. They give you both, the Mega Drive and the Super NES. Super NES is going to have more colors on screen at once. I would probably play the Super NES one. You get both Golden Axe from the arcade and Golden Axe on the Master System. Anyway, we could look at that all day. Oops, I accidentally started it. Well, let's take a look at it since I started it. I meant to hit the back button. We can uh, see what it takes to get back to the main screen here in a second. Select magic. You know, for a master system, which was uh, eight bit, the graphics aren't too bad. I mean, because you know, there's all kinds of eight bit systems. I mean, you, you wouldn't expect it, like a uh, twenty six hundred to look like this, right? And that's eight bit. The ma master systems obviously had a little bit better. Uh, Horsepower in it, better graphic chip, but this isn't bad. I mean, it's almost, honestly, it's almost 16 bit quality, really. Almost. I mean, the frame rate's not nearly as good. Um, it plays alright. Let me get on this stupid thing. Oh! Knock me over. Back up, woman. Taking your little. Oh, what the hell? Ah, okay, let's see if we can get out of this. I can pause it. There we go. So select and start together quits. Very cool. Sometimes some of these things don't let you quit out. You end up stuck in the game forever. All right, so let's go back. We have the Amiga, 1,051 games. That's pretty impressive. Um, and I like to see that they've got the RPGs in here. Because I tell you what, there are some 
really good RPGs from the 8 and 16-bit era that uh, are long forgotten, but uh, pretty great. Now, I'm not saying, like, they compare to something like, you know, Witcher 3 or, you know, anything by Bethesda. But what I am saying is that, like, sometimes it's nice to sit down with something a little different and play something a little bit older. I, I occasionally like to go back and play some of the Commodore 64 ones just because eh, it was a time where it was just a little bit like some of like the the lack of um, uh, story or something. I mean, there is a story, but I guess like the lack of atmosphere and, and the atmosphere that they do create makes the games feel a little creepier. I, I can't explain it, but uh, it's really interesting. Ah, this is impressive. This really is. This thing is freaking stacked. I mean, I could probably spend weeks just in the Amiga section alone playing all these games I played when I was younger. It's, um, assuming they all work. There are some really good games. I don't admit this this uh, this interface is super nice. Even uh, emulating Fears AGA. That's interesting. Let's look at this really quick because on a CD32 which ran uh, 68020 processor um, with two megs of RAM. It's virtually unplayable because it's so slow. So uh, let's see um, how it works here. I am curious. I mean, you can put an expansion board into a CD32 or an Amiga 1200 and play this no problem. I mean, that, that's kind of what it was designed for. Um, here it's going to be a little bit more uh, interesting. We got you all loaded down here, cracked. It's the cracked version by Dark Angel of Gore Design. Thanks, Dark Angel. Okay, what's it doing? Is it going to play? Did it just crash? So I wouldn't doubt if it just crashed because I you know this is quite a. Uh, yeah, I think it crashed. I don't think it's going to take that long to load it. Yeah, bring up the keyboard. Do, 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 do. Where's it? Enter. Here it is. So I'm not sure about that one. Do like this this menu system though. It is pretty baller. Um, let's try this version, even though it's I'm sure it's the same. But let's see if it launches. It's the point of the show, folks. It's called Will It Work? Will fears work or not? We're finding out together. This is a group effort. You're thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. We're both staring at the same screen. All right, so this didn't go into the crazy crack menu. It uh, drives right into the game here. Well, got us into something. Well, 
not start. So this was this was something that just came out at the time when like Doom and stuff was out, you know. So they were trying to get like a game that had like it was like Doom, you know, and um, it was uh, curved surfaces rather than just you know squared away rooms and stuff because that was really the big performance difference is that if you wanted like curved walls, you had to. Um, Excuse me, the map. I got that. Can move. You would think it's the A button. It is not. It's not X. It's not Y. B is map. Um, oh. I got a knife. So this is like just shooting and bringing up the map. Yeah, that's not good. Who designed this game? Terrible. I, uh, I get to a menu. Where's escape? Installed program has modified the CACR detected on entering via rest load examine. So it's just like an air. So I'm going to say this is a bust for fears, which is okay. I kind of figured it would be. It, it was a pretty demanding game for the CD32. The CD32 is probably not emulated uh, perfectly anyway because, I mean, it could be in here, but... Um, it has some extra stuff in it versus the Amiga 1200, and they should be general, generally compatible, but CD32 actually has one extra microchip in it, that, and plus it does CD, uh, so um, yeah, not everything. But anyway, let's see what else we got here. There we go, flashback again. Fright Night. You know what though? If most of these games do work, so pretty nice uh, collection of stuff here. There's Golden Axe on the Amiga. Hacker. Hacker two hardballs, good baseball game. All right, let's back up. Let's see what else we got here. We got. Um, let me broke it down. Put the Amiga 1200 in its own section. It's not necessary. Got the Amstrad. It's another computer. I'm not going to look that one up. Everybody knows the Atari 2600. 643 games in the Atari 2600. If you think about that, that's quite a lot. I mean, being that it's not a computer, that means people went out and sold cartridges, uh, you know, to people. And they 643 different types of cartridges. And, uh... Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a number. Um, kind of amazing. 5,273, 7,864. Atari 800, that's a computer, but it played a lot of games. 5,097 games. 8-bit. Um, it's the same thing that runs the Atari XEGS. So you technically could call it the XEGS game system. Uh, yeah, and so, you know, in comparison, you're like, well, the Atari had only 600 games. This has 5,097 games, which is true. Um, but, you know, a lot of these um, games, you know, you, you with computers, you can get a lot of uh, homebrew and, and shareware and stuff that comes out at the same time as the original stuff. And that's not to knock any of that. I mean, there's a lot of great games like that, but it, it's not quite the same thing. So when you when you have package games that you're selling, it's um, that's kind of what you want to get a count on. 
links. It's a good system. Got one of those. Atari ST. That's cool. That's kind of like the Atari version of the Amiga in the sense that they came out around the same time. Like, like the people that used to work at Commodore had left Commodore. Uh, and um, uh, there was some lawsuits about the Amiga, but they sort of started up Atari, uh, the ST computers thing to take on uh, Commodore. And so, like, there was, like, this war going on all the time. And the Atari ST was a, a good system, but I always felt like it was just a little bit behind um, uh, the Amiga uh, in terms of what it could do. Um, it sort of suffered in the sound area a little bit, but it was more like it had it had things about it that were really good as well. So I, I don't want to knock it at all because I don't. Uh, they did a really good job with it, but like the Amiga, it didn't, it wasn't a success. It, you know, it didn't help their company even, you know, both companies mismanaged themselves right into the grave. Um, but, uh, 4,742 games, it's a lot of games. A Thomas wave. Uh, I'm somewhat familiar with this. Let me look this one up. A Thomas wave. Custom arcade system board and cabinet from Sammy. It is based on Sega's Dreamcast console. It shares similarities with the Naomi as far as it uses removable game cartridges as well as a removable module for change in the control scheme and is common to see the Sega logo on its boot up screen. It is commonly believed that the Atomus Wave has more virtual RAM or video RAM and audio RAM than a Dreamcast, but this is not true. The Atomus Wave uses interchangeable game cartridges, and the cabinet's control panel can be easily switched out with different control sets, including dual joysticks, dual light guns, and a steering wheel. Yeah, so it's basically the Dreamcast arcade uh, portable, portable system. You know, at a time when I think they were, like, SNK was really good with that whole thing. You sort of module arcade cabinets. You could just keep the cabinet where it was and switch out uh, the games and, and the controls and things. Uh, pretty much on site and have another, uh, you know, put some different logos and marquees on the, on the um, outside and you have a whole new game uh, without having to, um, you know, move all that hardware around. So, you know, some other companies were doing the same thing. Commodore 64, 4,978 games, Dreamcast, only 24 games on the Dreamcast. I guess so because... Um, you know, they're kind of big. What do we get? Crazy Taxi. Wayne Kruger. Eh, it's Soul Reaver. Combat. Power Stone's fun. Code Veronica. Soul Calibur. You got a few ones. You got a few good ones. Not everything, but not bad. It's arcade. Basically, the NES. The disc system, though. Got one of those. Game & Watch. Really? See, this is where, like, collector, like, I don't consider Game & Watch consoles. They're just LCD-type games. It is so weird that they emulate those, man. I mean, because somebody has to, like draw or at least screenshot each one of those LCDs to make that happen. It's impressive that the people do that. Game Gear, Game Boy, 493 games. Pretty good. Game Boy Advance, 1,081 games. It's, it's pretty healthy. I could probably, there's some duplicates in there for sure. Game Boy Color, 548. Genesis, in television, MAME, Sega Master System, what was the other one, Sega CD, Sega Genesis, 890 games, I'm not sure what's going on there, 
MSX2, 64, 256 games. Nintendo 64 has always been one that's a bit hard to emulate as well. It's gotten better, but it's always like been the one that sort of struggles with frame rate and things like that, and um, or getting it to work with sound and all that that sort of thing. Um, that 64 was a decent system, but I tell you, like it it um, it's got so many games that are like identical to one another. That's the the hard thing about that console. Like there's so many of these 3D. Like it seems like you know, um, like the Tomb Raider esque or Super Mario 64 uh, 3D world thing. Run around, get coins, jump jump up on things. Like it seems like uh, Nintendo must have handed out a game library to developers and said like this is how you can make this type of game. And then they, like, everybody made a game just like that or something. I, I don't know. And so then it took Nintendo to be like, well, you, yeah, can't, you can make other games. Here's some other examples, everyone. And, you know, everyone's like, meh. Still, it, it has a lot of great games on it. Last real cartridge system, I think. Naomi. The DS. Neo Geo CD, which is weird because it's basically the Neo Geo. Neo Geo, the actual NES, Neo Geo Pocket, and the Pocket Color. Pretty cool, man. Get all the Neo Geo and Neo Geo Pocket Color games. Odyssey 2. Don't need to play those. Huh. Open Beats of Rage, five games. Not familiar. Turbo Graphics 16, Turbo Graphics CD, Pokemon Mini. Hey, it's the Pokemon Mini. We looked at that. Ha <laughs> ha, 26 games for the Pokemon Mini. That's that's ridiculous. I don't think there's actually 26 games for that thing, but that's that's hilarious that they emulated that. Awesome for them. Um, the heck is this? Just ported some extra stuff and it doesn't have any uh doesn't go to a console. PSP PlayStation. Let's see what we got for PlayStation. Got Final Fantasy 9, Origins Tactics 7, of course. The original Gran Turismo. But then I said two. Gran Turismo 2 is great. Um, got some Resident Evils, Road Rash. Not bad. You know, obviously, there's tons more, but not bad. 32X, Sega CD. Only two games for the Sega CD. It was One Night Trap, Final Fight, and Sonic. I don't really want to play Night Trap. Sega's 1000, and back to the Super Nintendo. So as you can see, uh, this thing is loaded. Um, and uh, it has a really nice menu system. It seems like most stuff works pretty good. Clean sweep. Don sees his dad. He's this all the time. On the actual Vectrex. Not on this, because it wasn't around. Mindstorm. Mindstorm is a really great um, uh, Asteroids clone. You're like, oh boy, Asteroids. But it's actually kind of fun. And they have like a Star Trek. Yeah, there's like a Star Trek game that's pretty fun. No screenshot, Star Wars clone. Let's see if it runs. Can you do it? Look at that. It's got the Vectrex logo. Do do do. Oh. 
I see that, but how do I turn? I'm moving my aim around, but how do I actually... Oh, that's right. This is on rails. Yeah, this is a kind of an interesting... I don't think this was... This was not official. Somebody said, you know, Star Wars in the arcade is... Um, vector graphics. Let's release it for the... Uh, let's make a version for the Vectrex. But at that point, I think um, the the Vectrex was old, and the oscilloscope technology that's used on this thing um, was uh, not up to making a decent emulation of um, Star Wars. Well, it's not bad, but it's nowhere near what the original Star Wars was. Right, let's get out of this. Um, nowadays, you can buy like a, a sit-down version of the Star Wars arcade game for your house. I think Walmart sells it for like 300 bucks or something. It has like the original controller. And the original controller was actually from... Uh, they used those controllers uh, inside the Bradley fighting tanks or something in the military or something. Kind of crazy. Um, Vectrex... Being a vector scope, we'll talk about it. I have one. It's um, it's getting pretty old though. It, it probably needs to be recapped. It takes a while to warm up, um, and I haven't turned it on in quite some time. Uh, but uh, hopefully, it still kicks on. Virtual Boy. I mean, what's the point? What is the point? This is just going to give you a headache with all the red. Um, I have one of these too. At least this way you can see what it looks like, sort of, because it's not something that's going to be easy to show on camera, that's for sure. Just blacking out the screen, that, that's more having to do with my um, Hop Hog uh, um, video encoder, because it, the resolutions are changing around, and so then it sort of stops and re-examines it and then gives us the screen back. If you were actually using this in person, it would be a lot better. Uh, okay. Yeah, this was... Oof, this system, we'll talk about it. It's... I don't know what Nintendo was thinking of this. Good luck. It did 3D. I mean, things looked like they were in 3D. I'm playing this about as good as I did in the, in the original. This is virtually like an image. If it's in 3D, you can kind of see what's going on. This is like, you can't tell which line is the line you're in and which one's. Ugh. Awful. Not that the real system's any better. We'll give you a total headache. I uh, do not know what was going on at Nintendo headquarters when they came out with that thing. Basically, a toy. Um, which, you know, is what Nintendo was good at making. Um, but it didn't last long. And you could buy them, like, at Toys R Us and stuff, when they were liquidating them for about 10 bucks. You know, the games were like $5. You could have saved them and made a fortune later in life. The Roboxer! games were kind of hard to find because it didn't do so well. Yeah, 
Yep. Terrible. It's awful. Awful. Anyway, now you get the general idea. Super Console X Pro plays pretty good. This controller's not too bad. Uh, not knowing all the button, button mappings is kind of a, a bummer. Um, let's play something that's a little bit more modern. A little bit more modern. Let's play maybe Dreamcast. Let's look at... Um, Capcom 2. Sega. Let's see, watch me get my ass kicked first round. Amazing anybody can memorize all the freaking moves you send here. Uncanny road is the best word. I don't care what anybody says. What is that? What is that big Mexican cactus or something? say sitting here in the zone playing this that uh controls work pretty good i mean it's pretty smooth uh, i have no complaints about the performance i, I can get off what i want and i don't really remember freaking any of the news of this but it's uh it's not having any problems executing which buttons I'm pressing and any of that. Pretty good. Time over. 
Boo! See, I lost. So, overall, this is a nice little, I get why everybody likes it. This is a nice little um, unit. It's very small. It's compact. I'm feeling it. It does get pretty warm, but uh, I have it sitting on carpet. I think if you put it on like an actual um, desk or something so it can get a little bit of breathing room, it probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, didn't seem to impact performance at all, even getting hot. So, uh, Super Console X Pro. I mean, if I was going to buy something right now, I'd probably buy one of these. <laughs> it's freaking loaded uh, with games. You do have to buy the one that's loaded, but, um, you know, spending the extra money, you get a, a crap load of uh, pirated titles. What else can I tell you? I'm not telling you should go do that. Because I'm, I'm not sure it's legal for you to do it. Although I don't know if you should be the one to blame. I think the people that are selling it, uh, maybe. But anyway, uh, all in all, though, freaking pretty solid system. I have no complaints. So that's the uh, Super Console by Hank. <laughs> and uh, it's not really. It's, uh, let's be fair. It's uh, Ken Han K. Uh, Super Console X Pro. Yep. You can find it on Amazon and eBay and everywhere else. Okay, that's it. Let's move on to something else. Peace.